Hey everyone, uh, Damien here, Sleepy Reader 666, with uh, one of my Batman focused videos. Uh, mostly probably going to be about Batman Eternal, two issues that I just read, and maybe a little bit about Grayson, and a little bit about the end of the Icarus arc in Batman Detective Comics. I feel kind of out of the groove of reviewing comic books on video. Or, I hate the word reviewing. But anyway, talking about comic books on video. Um, so I thought I'd try this without my face there to distract me. <laughs> so pardon me for the, the odd angle that these books are at. Um, just didn't have many spots to set up this evening. Uh, and maybe part of what's hard to talk about is I was while I was gone and unable to get a hold of comic books, I was really psyched for when I would get back to Batman Eternal. But then I, when I read them, I found these two issues a little bit of a letdown. I mean, they both have a lot of good stuff in them, but it, they just didn't click for me as much as I was hoping. And in the bigger picture, they both add some nice bits to the the mosaic that the ongoing weekly Batman Eternal comic has become. And so they're certainly worth reading, and um, I'm not flagging in my interest on Batman Eternal. But I think that, um, that this first issue here, 17, is the sort of end of a three-issue three span spent mostly on the Arkham Asylum, Corrigan, and Batwing plotline. Um, we'll obviously come back to that because nothing's concluded here. And I think with with the full three issues sort of in my head, I felt a sense of repetition and of not getting very far. Um, it felt like in each of these issues, our our main characters slogged a little bit further into the darkness that is Gotham Asylum. And there were some good bits and good little creepy things going on and lots of great Gustin, Dustin Wynn art. Um, but it just, not going as far as I thought it would kind of put a damper on, on my pleasure. And this issue, I particularly felt a sense of repetition. Um you know, sort of the, the the fighting of the ghouls and not really getting anywhere. And although we're now given some background on Reverend Blackfire, and I don't have any previous knowledge of him, I understand that he was in Batman the Cult, which I haven't read yet. Um, <clears throat> but even the, the backstory we get on him... Uh, shed some light on who he is, but leaves obscure, you know, how did he get from being kind of this basically con man preacher who uh, brainwashes people, um, but is a normal human being, to being this supernatural being who um, possesses bodies and can control all kinds of supernatural stuff going on that it's affecting hundreds of people in the bowels of Arkham Asylum. I mean, he's almost like uh, an evil god who controls everything. And um, so learning about Reverend Blackfire seemed to be the main progress of the issue, but it was also a very incomplete learning, I guess. The other, the other sort of standout little bit was this two pages with um, Red Robin and Harper Row Bluebird, um, which gave us strength in Bluebird as a character, basically. But even that contained within it a sense of repetition to me, because just like when Batman went to Hong Kong and got just a tiny bit of information, which just sends him back to Gotham, uh, Red Robin goes to Tokyo, <laughs> gets a tiny bit of information, which is going to send him back to um, Gotham. And then we also had somewhere in here a two-page um, scene with Alfred Pennyworth and um, 
about Sister Julia Pennyworth, which seemed to just recapitulate a previous conversation they had two or three issues ago, where basically she says, you know, how can you be wasting your life as a butler when, you know, you have all these skills and you could be doing something important in life. Um, and you used to be doing... And it, it's, it's probably not word for word, the previous conversation, but it's point for point, the previous conversation. And... Um, so that had a sense of repetition. The art's certainly cool as I page through here. Um, there's sort of this repetition of the feeling of Jimmy Corrigan, if that's his name. I don't know if it's James or something else Corrigan. Uh, you know, not being able to summon the specter. I suppose it was interesting that the... Um, Reverend turns a bunch of his followers into man-bats, um, although I guess they're not the same kind of man-bat as, as people um, that we've seen in Batman Incorporated previously working for Ra's al Ghul. But, I don't know. So, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it, but just that feeling of not getting very far kind of frustrated me after three issues of this. And there was there was something else. I'm not gonna. I'm sorry for all this flipping back and forth. There was this phone conversation, which I guess had to do with Corrigan or with Batwing, and it indicated they'd been missing for a week. So that's interesting. Um, but I don't know who this person was that they were calling and why he shouted Luke. Well, Luke is Batwing, right? So I don't know. Uh, these are just kind of quibbles, but it just kind of added up, and somehow um, my dissatisfaction with this issue bled into my reading, which I did immediately afterwards, of Batman Eternal 18, which has this killer Alex Garner c painted cover. He does all the painted covers for a Batgirl, and I really come to love his work. Um, and both these issues have have great or, you know, very good and interesting artists on them. This artist, um, on 18, uh, Andy Clark is one I've seen do good work before, and he definitely, does, particularly on faces, does some very interesting stuff here. Very vivid and strong, strong visuals. Um, and this issue should have excited me more than it did and maybe it was just like I said the bleed over of my mood because it a part of it focuses on the relationship between this new James Gordon like character um, Jack Jack Bard or James Bard Jim Bard I'm not sure um, Bard Lieutenant Bard and He's become an intriguing character because Batman's become aware that he doesn't follow the same morality that Batman does, and and we and Batman also, I think, are wondering if he's up to something else no good, um, or is he just this tough cop with a different standard than Batman? I kind of wondered if he's going to turn out, turn into a villain in the future, or if he will turn out to be some evil mastermind behind a lot of things that have been going on. Or maybe not. Maybe he'll just be a, a foil to Batman within the police. So having the two of them go on a bit of an adventure is really quite a great idea. You know, they're down in the sewers and they meet Killer Croc, but there's something else going on. But I guess I just found myself distracted somehow. And we have some interesting stuff with uh, Gordon in prison. It just, I don't know why it didn't totally click for me. Yeah, I can't put my finger on it, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, the other big thread here, so we had three threads, basically. We had the Batman and Bard, we had Jim Gordon in prison, and then we had Red Robin, not Red Robin, Red Hood, Batgirl, and Batwoman down in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. 
uh, one of the sunniest places on earth, um, but portrayed here as all black clouds of pollution. Um, and certainly there's lots of suffering in Brazil and mistreated children, so that's, you know, not too far off, but there isn't much sense of, of the Rio de Janeiro that I know. I, I visited there once and spent about a month there. Um, but anyway, that's, that's not important. Um, but maybe something in all of the characterization didn't hit me as just right. And I, I feel like, I, I think I've said it before, that both um, the writer, uh, Fox is the script writer in this one, but the story is always by Tinian and Snyder, but Fox is the script writer in this one, and Tim Seeley is the script writer in this one, and I feel like maybe they are less, they feel like lesser partners, and they're not as deeply committed to it, so there's a certain perfunctoriness sometimes to the character or to the unfolding of the plot. So it's actually the James Tinian scripted issues of late that have been been the really on the spot Batman Eternal issues. So ironically for me, because I have in the past avoided or learned to avoid Tinian, I now am s eagerly awaiting the next Tinian scripted issues. <clears throat> Well, both of these issues to me felt dense with the Batman world um, and this feeling of, you know, decades of Batman history, <laughs> uh, which is always kind of, always stops me short because I'm still very much a, a person of the DC New 52 at this point. And um, the dense layers of characters and long-term relationships with Batman are sometimes disconcerting, uh, but I've got to learn. I've got to learn to live with that because that's just the way it is. It's both got two years of continuity and seventy-five years of continuity, kind of interweaved with each other. <clears throat> so um, I hope that they stick with the plot threads here for a few issues and um, spool them out more. You know, don't don't spend three issues like with this one to give us very little. Um, even on the cover there they showed uh, the Spectre, but we never got the Spectre. I mean, we've had three issues with the character who's supposed to become the Spectre and he doesn't become the Spectre. And we're not given any particular reason why he doesn't. He just doesn't. I mean, I think he's expecting to at this point, but he doesn't. So, <clears throat> it's all interesting stuff, and I, I guess it's just going to be up and down. Some weeks you're going to really get into it. Other weeks you're less going to get into it. And as I say, I still kind of appreciate all the pieces of the tapestry that I get out of this sort of most enjoyable of the Bat books was Grayson number two of the Bat book, the four Bat related books that I read this week, um, these past few days, past two days. Um, this one very much continues in the mode of the first issue, which was a really excellent issue. I think this one is a little more diffuse. There's more things going on and maybe not all of them fit together as well into a tight plot. Um, but still there's a lot of good stuff going on, and there's this sad feeling about the distance of the relationship between um, Dick and and Bruce Wayne, and, and their limited ability to communicate with each other because of him being an undercover spy and everything. Um, but my biggest problem or the biggest flaw, I think, in Grayson is the inclusion of the Batman knockoff, the Midnighter, who comes from the Wildstorm universe, is a member of Stormwatch, and was a member of the Authority. Um, and it, to me, he's a big distraction. There's... I can't wait to learn more about Spiral and 
maybe I would know more about Spiral if I'd read the right DC books in the past. I'm not sure. It was kind of interesting to have this sort of speeded up metabolism, super villain or goal of Spiral, <laughs> asset of, uh, soon to be asset of Spiral. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm not being that coherent, but I enjoyed this issue quite well. I don't know why it is that they now know the Flash's identity, because they got this stomach, and in the previous issue they found out Batman's identity, was it? Or someone else's identity. I don't know how they get the identities out of the body parts that they're, these, these experimental body parts that they're harvesting. Anyway, there's question marks, but, but um, still very enjoyable. And, as I say, love the visuals. So, uh, so far Grayson seems like a big winner. Uh, very cool. Detective Comics was the end of... I, I really want to like this run of Detective Comics because I love Manipool's art, Francis Manipool's art, and I suppose I should say the, the art and the colorist work with him together, um, who is also his co-writer, um, and he makes such good use of the double-page layouts. Um, so it's definitely something that I want to get in the single issues where you can lay it out flat like this and really uh, fully enjoy those double page layouts. However, yeah, I'm not going to say it as well as other people. Uh, Josh Hayes did a very good video on this. It's a very weak issue and it doesn't pay off on some of the good things that were in the earlier issues of the arc. Um, all of the arc has been kind of it's got good stuff and bad stuff. I think it could have really redeemed itself if it pulled it all together and in rather rather than do that it seemed like quite a bit of lazy writing slash lazy plotting at the end that does not redeem the whole series. And even though e even in the course of loving the arc one questions in one's mind whether to whether to invest in another arc of this um, if they're not gonna really pull their weight on the writing. It's not like obviously bad writing, it's more like like it's missing pieces here or there or it doesn't flesh things out or doesn't explain itself well at times or is forced to explain itself through forced dialogue. Look at that, this is, I don't know how well you can see it even the way I'm holding it, but uh, incredible layouts. Just looking at it, I'm loving it, <laughs> but reading it, I was uh, kind of disappointed. Um, but it's, some of my disappointment is because of some really good stuff they put in here that they didn't fully work out well. There's also a weird vibe to this about the relationship between Batman and Bullock, it's kind of like they first met. Like they're, they've only known each other for a short amount of time. They don't have a long history with, you, with each other. Which is ironic given what I was talking before about everyone having this long history with Batman um, going well before the New 52 and just continuing on into the New 52, defying the logic of the reboot. But... Um, yeah, looking at this art again as I talk to you, I feel like I'm inevitably going to keep buying this because I am a fan of comic book art that um, that reaches certain levels. So it's hard, it's hard to resist this. And I, I have become a big fan of the two-page layout. Um, and they're obviously playing constantly with the different things you can do with a two-page layout. My copy doesn't seem to even... It seems to have been printed poorly, but it's still very exciting. Printed poorly in the sense that the... Or stapled together poorly so that some of the artwork isn't lining up properly. Yeah, like this character right here, who has some kind of 
almost nuclear kind of power is not explained well at all. Uh, the, you know, when I read the, I read the first three issues of, dete of this detective arc all at once, and they actually made a very strong impression on me. So I think I'm going to go back and read all five or six issues together. I think it was six issues total. And see if, I re if it reads differently to me than it does reading this issue a month after the previous issue. So that's my, uh, my Batman thoughts for this past week. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well, and you'll probably see videos again from me quite soon. Bye-bye.